5 Steps to Build an Efficient Computer Vision MVP Hi, I am Sergio. In the last 7 years, I built dozens of MVP for computer vision for different types of clients. I had clients that were companies, researchers, universities, students, and for them, I built MVPs that were for automated some process inside the company, to some game to demonstrate a new functionality, object detection, object segmentation, and many different like this. And in the process, I found five steps to make this very efficient so that you are happy with the work and the client, the users are happy with your product. Before we get into the five steps, let's find the difference between an MVP, which is the minimum viable product, and POC, which is the proof of concept. If you are new to the field and you're not familiar with this terminology, it's something that you will get soon to know because it's very, very uh, well known in the field and it's asked especially about building AI software. The MVP is the minimum viable product, so it's already a version of the product that offers some features and it work, works already with the final client to gather feedback, while the proof of concept is a step before that and it's only to demonstrate the feasibility of a concept or an approach to solve a problem, mostly to prove the final client that that solution is possible and it's used mostly to get investments and funding to build the solution. To have an example of some of a goal and how that will be a proof of concept and an MVP, let's say that the final goal for the client is to build a software to identify defects on products on a conveyor belt so that this can automate, uh, automate and replace the manual check by the users. A proof of concept could be a simple code that shows that in a video, a deep learning algorithm is capable of understanding what are the defects and identifying them. A minimum viable product is a step beyond that, where in this case, we will need already to have a software where at least could work on, let's say, at least on some of the defects of the products, but it needs to work already and prove the users and gathered feedback from the user while the product is working. Now that you know the difference between these two, let's get into the first step. Step number one, define the problem. This is how it works in business. You don't start to build anything unless you define already a problem. If you start building something without defining a problem, then you're going to go out of the objective. You're going to build features that are not necessary and so on. So always start with defining the problem. The problem, to define the problem in the MVP, there are three things I suggest to move with. The first one is having a very clear objective of the problem you want to solve. I told you the example of companies that want to automate the defect recognition with a computer vision software. In that case, the problem will be to automate, to have a computer vision software that identifies the, the defects in real time and gives an alert or it identifies the users, or it automates some other processes inside the company when the defect is found. If there is some company that wants to automate the traffic management, the problem could be identify vehicles for the number of hours per day from the number of, hour of cameras that they have, and provide a report. So the final goal is to have a software that does all of this. To achieve this with an MVP, we need to simplify because we're talking about complex problems when we want to build a definitive solution. And in this case, we need to narrow down the scope to a manageable size. If the goal is to identify defects on a product, and provide a feedback on that with the software, the, the problem is complex because when you, I talk with the companies, there are many different types of defects that you can recognize. Uh, if it's the plastic, uh, could be metal, could be on different material like wooden, and each material can have different defects. It could be scratches, it could be size, it could be colors. You need to go narrow down, choose, 
The most important one, you can choose this, of course, with the client, with the funnel user, focus on the most important, the one that will require 80% of the work, that will give 80% of the results. That's the problem you should focus on and only that one, because we're talking about an MVP and it's good to have some features that already work for the most important aspect that you want to solve. If it's for a company that needs to automate traffic, you can decide what's the most important aspect of the traffic, if they want just to manage the queues, if they want to uh, count the vehicles, if they want to understand what category are the vehicles, you need to choose one feature and focus on that one. The more you add, the more it's going to make the MVP complex. So it's good to choose this carefully before starting to working on that. And then define a success metric. Determine how success will be measured. Is it the accuracy? Is it the speed? Is it user satisfaction? For example, on defect recognition, if the company, the goal of the company with the final product is to speed up the process, let's say that they, with manual manual check, they can control only 100 products per hour, could be that the new product, the goal is to check at least 500 products per hour. So in this case, the metric will be the speed. If the problem that they're encountering is that the manual check is not reliable because 70% of the products only are identified with the problem and 30% are not identified, a metric with the building of this MVP would be, for example, to achieve at least 95% of accuracy while detecting the, the defects. If it's with the traffic, it's the same thing. They want to increase the accuracy or they want to speed up the process. They want better user experience. All of these, what is the success metric, need to be identified before building the project. This is step number one. Step number two, choose the right tools. The right tools are two things you need mostly to focus on. On software side, which are the libraries and the frameworks, what are the libraries that are the best for your solution? And the hardware. The hardware, what's the minimum hardware required to run the solution? And I want to be clear on this because I see many developers form opinion doing a mistake on this because the hardware optimization is a complex part of the implementation of the product it it's a part that takes a lot of time so unless it's a strict requirement from the beginning it's good to choose a hardware that will make the working on mvp very very simple if for example you can you have the chance to run the mvp on the computer the final client will have the chance to run the mvp on a laptop there is no point to going right away into a nvidia jetson board a raspberry pi or any board a small board which will have them aim to make the software very efficient very easy to very portable that's not the goal of the, the initial mvp unless there is a requirement um, I, I collaborated with some company where because of temperature, they were working with some metal, they couldn't put any machine, any, any computer machine there. So in that case, they had to put a special hardware which could work with high temperatures and, they, and it had to be very small. So in that case, that had to be the minimum viable product. But it depends on the case. Most of the time, 90% of the time, even more, the hardware needs to be the easiest that you can get to work very fast and same for libraries and frameworks libraries and frameworks should be tools that you use that make you the things very efficient and fast and only later you can change frameworks if necessary to scale the product so choose everything that's very simple data collection i put this as a third point but it, this is very crucial so Pay attention to this one. Establish exactly what data you need to collect and how you will collect it. And I see a lot of mistake on data collection and also some underestimating the size of the project from many developers because we see a lot of we see a lot of models online that are performing 
a lot of type of detections like people recognition, uh, vehicle recognition, and there, there are models that can detect hundreds and hundreds of objects and they are just ready to download and you can run it easily on your machine. But that's not the data that you need to have. Most likely the data needs to be specific for your project because if you make a mistake on this one, then you are going to lose a lot of time and be lost later on the project. Let me give you an example. If you're building a solution to identify people from CCTV cameras, and you think that you don't need to collect data, but instead you just implement the model that you find online, then you're going to have something that doesn't work well, because you will find out very soon that when you take the pre-trained model found online, for your service, for your software, this will not work, for example, with the night vision, this will not work where there is a bit of occlusion, because that's not the data these solutions were trained for. So data collection always needs to be a part of your MVP, even if you think there is already data online, because that's not accurate and it will give you problem. Data annotation, uh, annotate accurately the data collected. So this is very crucial to have something reliable if the data is not annotated correctly. And I see many open source projects online which are very nice, but then when you see the data annotation, I see that it's done poorly. So bounding boxes that are missing some objects, bounding boxes that are bigger of a few centimeters of the objects that will cost a lot along the way because then you get an unreliable model and you don't know if it's problem for the, of the code of, of the model. So the data is one of the most important part of any deep learning and AI solution. So this need to have the attention it deserves. And also, ideally you should gather, if possible, from the beginning test data. You need to gather data real data on how will be the final usage so that you can simulate already locally what will be the final usage and you can test things before going live. And this will give you a huge advantage to create a reliable solution. Step number four, make it simple to use. This is my mostly my takeaway. So this is not, uh, this is probably some unconventional, but these are my five steps that I'm showing to you based on my experience. And the four, make it simple to use, for me, it's very important to make uh, me happy as a developer, but also the client happy. Why it's a win-win situation? Because if you make it simple to use, the client is happy and you don't have to go back and forth or offer extra support all the time. To make it simple to use, there are three things, easy installation, make the installation process as easy as possible, especially if the final client are not developers, they are not technical people, you want them to have the solution just uh, like a no-brainer, just one click and it's working. So if it's for win, if it's the installation, for example, and it needs to run on Windows, I will give to the client an installer so that they can take the X file, they will put it on the machine, they install it and the solution run. Like, no code to install, no Visual Studio, no PyCharm, the solution needs to run right away. If they want a solution that was developed for a Raspberry Pi or an NVIDIA device, either you could prepare already an SD card that the client needs just to implement and it will run right away, or you can still prepare that, send the file to put it into the SD card. There, you don't have to give things to that is the client needs to install and, and a very complex and heavy process because no one wants to waste time on this. So if possible, you need to make things very simple and it will be beneficial for everyone. With this also, it comes a simple interface. You need to keep the interface minimal. If what's, sh what's shown on the, on the screen, it's not necessary information for the client, don't put that, don't put all the information about what the detection score of an object, uh, what the trajectory, if it's not necessary. Keep these things for yourself. If you need this information to learn it, to improve the software, you can save them, uh, make a way to save them locally so that you can gather this data later, but don't show them, don't make things very heavy and very complex. 
and also put a documentation, provide a clear documentation for the users and developers. Make the documentation very small and very simple, ideally like two pages on a PDF, not more than that, where you put the key features, what the clients can do, and so on. Keep it very simple because no one wants to read long documentation. No one will read long, long documentation. So keep it very simple. Put it also the more technical one for developers, even if at the moment you are the only one developing that. It shows that everything is very professional, professionally done and also it will be uh, useful later on for you or for the developers that are going to come in, into the project. And five and final step, make it as easy to collect the feedback. As the goal of the MVP is to collect feedback, make this step very simple because you want to, uh, if you don't do this, then it's very unlikely that they will send you the feedback. If, if the client or the user needs to uh, take a screenshot, send an email, uh, they will not do that. Make either some form where they, after something happens, they can just uh, write a couple of lines and press enter. If it's make a way to record the video while it's happening, all these kind of things. And also make an automatic data collection for the bug that either can be, can be sent, uh, saved on local, local machine or it can be connected to a database so that you get the, the bug data uh, very soon. I hope that this information was very useful to, uh, for you. Keep in touch, I'm going to release a lot of more videos about building computer vision software in the future. This is all for this video. See you in the next one.